Hey everyone and welcome back to the Lambda series. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can deploy Lambda functions with Apex so that we don't have to use the online editor anymore. Apex makes it easier to deploy projects with multiple files to Lambda. So let's get going. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new user in our AWS account specifically for Apex. And we're gonna lock this user down and give it only the rights that it needs. So it's rights to API Gateway and some rights to uh, Lambda. So here I am at the AWS console and let's go to Identity and Access Management or IAM for short. And let's create a new user for Apex. So I'm gonna click Create New User and I'm gonna call this one Apex Deploy. And I'm going to generate an access key for this user because that's what we're going to need uh, later on. So here we have the user's security credentials. I'm going to download them so that I can use them uh, later on. And I'm going to close. And this is now our user. So let's now attach some permissions to this user so that it is allowed to actually deploy our functions and manage uh, the APIs that we have. So let's open up these, uh, this user let's go to permissions and let's attach a new policy and we're going to search here for lambda and we're going to say uh, this is a lambda lambda full access it gets full access to all our, of our lambda functions now in theory this is actually bad practice you should only give it access to certain functions that you wish to deploy but for this video let's just give it full access to lambda attach this policy and we also have to give it access to IAM because Apex is going to create a role for our Lambda function uh, so that it can actually execute this with the correct rights. So let's add, attach a new policy. Let's go for IAM and I'm gonna give it full access. Again, this is not recommended. This is just for showing you guys how Apex works. So if you want to deploy Apex, make sure you lock these rights down. So let's attach this policy. And that should be it. So let's now configure Apex. But before we do that, you actually have to install AWS CLI first. It's the command line utilities from AWS. Now, I'm not gonna show you how you, you have to do this, but there are excellent guides um, online on how to install this. So here is um, the Amazon documentation on how to install um, AWS CLI for OS 10. So it's basically just downloading a script that they have uh, created and then install it. So once you have that up and running, let's install Apex. Now I've also done this already, but it's not really difficult. You, you go to the website apex.run and in the menu you'll find installation and the installation is just, it's, it's, it's very easy. You just have to run this simple command. And again, this downloads and executes a script um, from Apex to install the entire utility. So once you've done that, it's time to configure uh, the AWS command line tools. That's because Apex is built on top of them and we need to give these tools access to our accounts. To do this, simply type AWS configure and this is gonna ask you a few questions of what, what region are you in, what's your access key, what's your secret, etc. So now it asks me my access key. Let me go here uh, to the file that we just downloaded. Let's open that up in Sublime Text make this window a little bit smaller. So for Apex Deploy, this is our, um, our access key. And let's give it our secret key. And our region is EU West 1, that's okay. Now for you guys, this might be another region, such as uh, the US region, whatever. So I'm gonna confirm. Um, the default output format is okay, and that's it. Now this writes a config file to your disk and saves these credentials to it so that all future interactions with the AWS CLI tools uh, will actually happen authenticated with the correct user. So now we've got that up and running, it's time to create our very first APEC project. Let me go to my desktop and let me create a new directory. Uh, let's say test APEX, let's go into that directory. And now we can run APEX init. And APEX init will actually configure a brand new project for us. So it now asks us our project name. Uh, we're gonna call this project uh, first Apex project. And this is used to prefix your functions in Lambda. So let's do that. 
Uh, I'm not going to give it a description. Now it creates an AM role. It attaches that uh, policy to our role. It then creates a project.json file and it creates a functions folder in which we can create and which we can put all of our functions that should be deployed to Lambda. So here I've opened up the project that Apex has created and you can see there is a project.json file and there is a functions folder. So the project.json file actually contains some data about your function. So here we can see, for example, the name of our project, the description of our project, what the default memory allocation is for all of our functions inside this project, what the default timeout is, what the role is that each function will be executed with, in what environment we run, and so on and so on. Now, these are default values and they can be overwritten for every function that you create. So that means you can set your project's memory allocation to 128 megabytes, but you can override that value for certain functions that might require more memory. Now I'll close this uh, project.json file and in the functions folder, it has actually created a function for us. This is called a hello function. And in it, we find an index.js uh, file. Now, if you open this up, you can see they have created a very basic function for us that just outputs this object, hello with the value world. So now we can deploy this, even though it's just some dummy code, we can actually deploy it. So let's go back to our terminal and let's go apex deploy. And as you can see, it's now creating our function. It has created an alias with uh, the first version of our function. And it just confirms that our function has been created. So let's now head over to the AWS console and let's see if that function is there. So let's go to Lambda here. There it is. It's first apex project underscore hello. So first apex project, this is the prefix. This is the name of your project followed by an underscore and then the name of your function. Apex uses this naming scheme so that you can easily find all of your project functions together. And if I now open up this function, I can see I can no longer edit the code online. So usually in the previous videos, we could edit the code right here. But right now it says it looks like your Lambda function is unable to be edited in line. So you need to re-upload any changes. Now what's also really nice is that Apex versions your code online. That's also really, really, really cool. So let me go, let me go back to this function here and let's change uh, something. Let's go, instead of returning hello world, let's say hello world from Lambda or something. And let's save this function. Let's go back to the terminal. Let's deploy this again. And now you will notice that it has updated the alias and it has created a second version. Now, if I go back to it to the Lambda console and I hit refresh, I will actually be able to see those two versions and I can quickly switch between versions. So suppose something is wrong with the current version, I can quickly go back to the previous version that was hopefully working. So under qualifiers, you can see there's aliases and there's versions. And we can see there's version one, there's version two, version two is also our most current version, but I can return to any previous version if I want that, if I, if I would need that. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll show you how you can trigger your functions with scheduled events. That's a bit like using cron jobs on Linux. I hope you find this topic interesting. And if you do, make sure to subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up or follow me on Twitter.